Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us for another Thursday evening program here with the Genealogy Center. We're glad you're here, and we're looking forward to um, today's program, which will focus on online resources for Eastern European uh, family history. So our speaker tonight is Dave Obi, who's a journalist and genealogical researcher who's written a dozen books and given more than 700 presentations at conferences and seminars in Canada, the United States, and Australia since 1997. And he's editor and publisher of the Times Colonist in Victoria, British Columbia. And he's worked as a journalist in British Columbia and Alberta since 1972. And in 2012, he was awarded an honorary doctorate of laws by the University of Victoria for his work as a historian, genealogist, and journalist. So I will go ahead and hand it over to him. Thank you very much, Kate, and welcome to everybody. Um, I, I hope this, this, will, this will be a good session for, for all of you. I hope there's something to, that I can tell you about uh, research. Uh, just be warned that uh, there's a lot of variation in Eastern Europe. So I've tried to look at things that could apply to all the different countries. There are specifics in, in, in each country that you should be aware of when you're doing your research. And a couple words of, of, of caution. One is that I'm just, just getting over COVID. So if I start to cough, I will try to mute. Um, my apologies if I don't quite make it. Um, uh, that's my, the last lingering bit of God is the, is the cough. So bear that in mind. And thank you for your patience with it. So Eastern European Family History Online, <clears throat> the name of the, of the talk today. The basic rules of research that apply in Eastern Europe are the same as you would find anywhere else. You learn the basics of history um, and geography as well. Gather what the family knows, what your, what, your, what your own family knows, what you can get from sources closer to home. Check the internet for information. Use local resources, family search archives, wherever you are. Get to know the languages used. You don't have to learn the languages, but you, but you, but you, should, be, you should become familiar with the languages. So if, if you come across a document of some sort um, or looking at a map and the map is as, as uh, you know, is using a different language, you'll be able to figure out what the places are, that kind of thing. Uh, even what the letters sound like helps and cross the ocean if at all possible. And by that, I mean, go back to, to the, to the actual ancestral places. Um, the first time that I flew into Ukraine, um, I, when they, in the early 1990s, <clears throat> I looked down, I was watching the towns below because I knew what, what, what my ancestral area looked like um, from having looked at maps for so long. And seeing seeing the the town next to it and then seeing my mother's birthplace appearing um below me on, from the from the plane was just so remarkable and i realized that i had I'd seen it i knew it existed and if they turned me back at the border um whatever i didn't care anymore i'd i'd seen that uh, and then getting a chance a day later to actually walk the streets in that village. It means something, even if there's no genealogical research involved, even if you're not learning anything about it, you're experiencing it, which I think counts for a lot. <clears throat> the, bear in mind that much of Eastern Europe, it's a pretty brutal history, shaped by communism, shaped by war. And there were a lot of losers in the, in the past 150 years in Eastern Europe. Um, pretty much every ethnic group there has suffered um, and some way, way more than others, um, as a result of um, government actions of one form or another. So you have to learn to be a bit sensitive about what you're doing. I've been in, in archives in Ukraine where other, other researchers are crying at what they're finding out. Um, and I've, 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 I've found some records myself that, uh, that uh, were so disturbing. Um, I had to, when I shared them with with relatives, older relatives who were, were there at the time those records were created, they were very, very upset. One told me that she hadn't slept for days after, after seeing that. So be aware that there is sensitivity involved. And uh, talking about sources, <clears throat> just what, how, how things are different for Eastern Europe, I find Eastern Europe way more fascinating than my research in in England, Canada, the States, you know, Ireland, Australia, wherever else I'm searching because of the challenges. Look at what we have available to us um, in, you know, in Canada, the States and so on. Census, civil registration, church registers, directories, newspapers, local histories, cemetery records and more. That's just a start of what we have in, the, in, in this area. Researching in Volinia, which is where my mother was born, it's in Northwest Ukraine. I don't have any of those things. I've got none of those, those, those records at my disposal. So therefore I'm looking at 
filling in the gaps however I possibly can to uh, to learn what I can about the family history. And it means from time to time it's taking a bit of a bit of a a guess. Um, I've got I've got some situations where I know I'm related to to a family through DNA. Um, and I, I've found the family back in Poland in in the 1850s, 1840s, um, and I know we're related, but I don't know exactly how because I don't know which son would have been, you know, the, the, their father, my or grandfather, my grandfather, whatever. So sometimes it's a guess. And I've had people tell me how you can't really count on Eastern European research because you don't have things like birth certificates and so on. You don't have those kind of records. And to that, I say, well, DNA is telling us that a lot of birth records are fiction anyway. So don't worry too much about that. <clears throat> and of course, there are border changes as well. This, this is from a German historical atlas showing some of the changes in Poland over the years and trying to keep track of this, of these, these different uh, boundaries as as things changed um, from one, one one time to another and um, the impact that the boundary changes had on your family uh, it's it's crucial to keep that in mind like like minor border changes they seem minor to us now but that meant a new government was there there was a new jurisdiction so the records were moved to a different spot it could be the, the families were moved to a different spot they could be driven out um, because because of the the border change, my relatives who 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 were in uh, East Prussia at the end of the Second World War were all forced to go to Germany. Other relatives were forced to go to Kazakhstan. They were on the Soviet side. So, don't look at a border change as being simply a line on a map. Think of the impact it had on on people. Um, language is used. I'm uh, working on my father's side, for instance. I, I deal with English. It's pretty simple. On my mother's side, Ukrainian, Russian, German, Polish, Dutch, and English. They're all languages. I found records in all of these languages over the years. Um, and the Dutch is only because she came to North America on a Holland America ship. But still, I'm seeing different, different languages all the time. And that means adjusting your research as a result. <clears throat> and now there's a war, of course, to deal with. Um, the, this, was, this was a screen cap I got very, very early in the war. Um, when, when the CNN t uh, team was in Lviv, which is an extreme Western Ukraine. Um, I look at it and figure it's about as, you know, this may be two traffic lights away from Poland. You're not really that far into, into Ukraine, but it, it, is, it was definitely under attack. And it's, it's the impact that that has had it has been huge. I had just finished a fairly major project working with someone in Ukraine to get records from me, uh, for me from the archives. And the week he finished his work was the week that the war started. And uh, that meant that all of all of stuff I had done was now out of limits. Uh, the, the, the archive has not been open to private researchers since that point. And of course, some archives, things have been a bit worse. Uh, this is one archive in uh, north north uh, eastern Ukraine that was actually hit. And uh, so a lot of records were destroyed as a result of that. It must be said that uh, while the war has been going on, that uh, the, um, the family search microfilm teams have still been working hard, probably harder than ever in archives in Ukraine, gathering as much as they possibly could just in case it is destroyed. So kudos to them because they're, 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 they're facing a lot of really tough situations there and they're still going at it and still doing their work. <clears throat> Learn what you can about history and geography. So understand the context, understand the, the factors facing different people in your family. Uh, and learn about the, the geography, the changes in geography over the years. I have for years collected uh, images. I used to start by collecting physical maps um, just to show me you know, different areas um, of Eastern Europe, just so I could keep understand how things had varied from one time to another in, with my mother's family. And now you can find all these images online for free. It's uh, quite cool. We live in a wonderful time for that. But just get as many images as you possibly can through the years so you understand how things were, were changing uh, with, with your family, the impact that would have on your family. <clears throat> Europe in 1942, this is from a, I think it was a Rand McNally Atlas I picked up at a thrift shop, uh, showing Poland further over, 
Uh, Austria doesn't even exist there. But you see the, the borders at the time of, of countries such as Hungary and Yugoslavia and so on. Um, it, it's, it's, not, it's not the detail you need to look to find villages, but it shows you the bigger picture. It shows you uh, what the situation was like and you know, what the boundaries were like in between these countries at the time. Also, um, I, I've found over the years things such as this. This, this, this is a, um, a stamp issued by the general government, the German administration in Poland during the Second World War. And there's a surcharge on the stamp for the relief of, of uh, refugees. These are ethnic Germans coming into, into uh, German Hill territory, which is in, you know, Poland, um, during the war, and, and the money raised for them um, through, through, the, through the stamps, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we've seen a lot of, of forced migration of people in Eastern Europe over the years. These are, this is from the Bundesarchiv in, in, in Germany, this image showing people walking across uh, in Eastern Europe. These were ethnic Germans heading back into German territory. And I had relatives who were forced to walk quite a distance and leave everything behind with the promise that uh, they'll, be, they'll be back in two weeks. Don't worry about it, just leave everything, just take your clothes and go. And as a result of that, um, all family documents and so on were lost because they never were allowed back. Um, ethnic ethnic Germans living in Ukraine would have been you know sent off to to Kazakhstan or, or Siberia if they'd been there at the end of the war. My relatives ended up in Germany, and uh, the the next time that someone was in their home village looking at their their you know, someone from the family was in their home village was me in the 1990s. They never made it back there. And also, of course, bear in mind how some groups suffered much, much more than others. This is, this is the, the, the map of the, of the ghetto in Łódź in, in Poland. And um, the impact of the Nazi years is much, much more extreme um, in Eastern Europe than it was in Germany itself, because it was a much larger Jewish population in Eastern Europe. And as a result of that, um, there was much more um, the death, you know, the, the, the major death camps, the six major death camps were all in, in Poland, for instance. In, in Ukraine, uh, there were no death camps. Uh, they just basically grabbed the, 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 the Jewish population from different communities and took them off to the woods and shot them. Um, it was a different situation there. Um, so bear in mind all of that in terms of, in terms of the, the research you're doing, and you can understand the impact on your families uh, as, you, as, you, as you go through some of these, these records. <clears throat> Where were they? Talking about geography and some of the sources for geography. And in the handout, I refer to things such as gazetteers, um, using older maps, using gazetteers. Gazetteers are basically a printed index of places and with a lot of good information about what you'll find or what, in, in each community, what jurisdiction it was under, where, where the church was, where the, where the post office would have been, where the train station would have been. That kind of thing is said in a gazetteer. And that information can help you narrow down which of the many, many places with the same name were, you know, which one was your place. Uh, but there are modern maps as well that I think people should use. And uh, there's one site in particular that I, that I really um, get a lot of benefit from. And I'm going to show you a couple of tricks on how to, how to use it. First of all, google.com, maps on Google. This, this just shows Poland, fairly straightforward. I'm not a huge fan of using Google Maps for European uh, research because it doesn't have the accuracy. Quite often, names aren't shown as they should be. Um, with in one case, my some some of my ancestral areas in in Germany, the map doesn't even show the name of the place. Um, for to to do that, I have to use something like Via Michelin, which uh, is is uh, very similar to Google. It's uh, they could use it for for just finding places. You can use it for as as a to get directions when you're there, that kind of thing. I, it's better. For um, for European research, I believe than than Google is. My favorite is you know, you, there. There are different names for it. You can just search uh, or, or do it. Just type in pilot.pl, which will take you to to the to the the Polish name of the site. I find it to be by far the best, the most the most efficient in terms of finding anything. 
uh, you've got to be careful with it because it, it requires um, exact spellings. Um, and you also have to be aware that it covers um, more than just Poland. You can, you can use it throughout Eastern Europe, um, but you need a few, a few different tricks. I find it to be the most, uh, the most um, convenient in many ways. One example, this is one of my ancestral areas in Poland and it's showing the, the boundaries of the place more or less, because that'd be rough boundaries, that kind of thing. A map like this, I can look around, see the other villages in the area. Um, in the, with, uh, with um, um, pilot.pl, I can also, if I put my cursor down, once, once I've identified the place I want, I can put my cursor down somewhere else on, a, on an adjacent town. And down in the bottom right corner, it'll tell me how far away that place is from the one I've selected which is really ha handy if you want to figure out how far could people have gone? What was the range of people back in the day um, in terms of walking, in terms of getting to where they want to go, and in terms of meeting a potential mate, how far would they, would they go? It's really, really handy to see that kind of thing. And, um, or even, even you know, further afield, if you've got, you've got people who are in two different areas, are they related? Are this? Are is it the same family? And you identify one place. You put your cursor down on the other, and it says it's uh, forty-five kilometers away. That's not walking distance. That's too far for that. So uh, you bear. You look at that. That's a bit more information for you. you there's a lot of lot of material that you can find using Pilot.pl. These maps uh, are based on, I believe, Google Maps um, as 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 a base, but the overlay. That is that that you get through Pilot is has much more information in it, is much more usable in terms of research. It works for other countries, as I've said, um, but uh, th there there are catches. Here here I typed in into the Pilot search uh, box, uh, Zhitomir, uh, which is a place in in uh, Ukraine, where my where my um, uh, that, that's the biggest the biggest city where, where my mother near where my mother was born. And typing in Shatomer, then once you find the location, you press that word that starts with a P. If you press the one that starts with a W, it clears your search field. So you don't want to do that. You press the one that starts with a P, which means search, and, uh, and off you go. It doesn't work. <clears throat> so when I say add the Kraj, however you say that, my Polish is not very good at all. Um, that means add the, add the county. And you need the two-letter county code, which is why I put that that county code in the the um, in the handout, uh, just so you can you can tell at a glance which 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 or, or country code, which country code. I put that in the handout so you can tell at a glance what, what what you should put in there. So you put in Jatomer, and you put in UK, uh, and hit hit the word that starts with a P that means search, and it takes you to Jatomer in Ukraine. And the county code is fairly straightforward. Um, here, here, here you are. Here's what you need for Georgia, CR. For Germany, DE. Um, and and there, so on. There, there you go. Just just use that two-letter county or country code, and it will it will take you there. Another problem that uh, that Pilot uh, or a problem that Pilot PL has is um, it has to be exact. Uh, spelling. You don't have to worry about the diacritics, the accents on the letters, but you have to have the letters right. And uh, other, otherwise you've got a problem. <clears throat> I had a, a record from a relative. I was pretty sure what this place would, was, because I've heard of it before many times, but I wanted to search on, search on Pilot to see what would happen if I went looking for Dunskovola. And uh, what I end up with is no results, zero results, um, and I've got the box at the bottom that's basically asking me, maybe, maybe it's, maybe I put a different country in there, country code, but and I'm not going to do that. I know that it's Poland, um, but it will not give me that name because I'm searching for the wrong spelling. So in a case like that, search for it on Google and it gives you the proper spelling. It finds the place for you. It, it, it can get past your bad spelling. It finds the proper place for you. At that point, you can go back. Now that you have the proper spelling, just, just uh, copy those, the, the two words in the name, go back to pilot, and you'll get more information on the area doing it that way. Um, so Google is handy for, for, for getting past some of the spelling issues that you might have. But beyond that, I prefer pilot. 
another site worth looking at is OpenStreetMap. It, it has a lot of information. Um, it's all basically supported by volunteers, um, the open source effectively mapping, and a lot of good information can be found here. Uh, looking for, in this case, for Sedolish, which is one of my ancestral areas in, in um, Poland, and uh, gives me the, the names of the of the, the the administration areas to, to one side, what 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 county it's in, what district it's in, that kind of thing. Just just more background information um, that you're not going to get off a regular map, but uh, uh, it's well worth um, taking a look at at at, uh, at this site with it, wherever wherever you are in the world, just to see what you can find for information. Um, some of the some of the sites, and I say off the beaten path. Like I'm assuming everyone is using already things like ancestry and my heritage and so on. I assume that we're using some of the basic ones like that. I find my heritage to be the most helpful because there are a lot more people of uh, Eastern European descent on there, especially through DNA. And I found uh, a lot of good records using my heritage myself. And then, then after I find them on my, my heritage, I, I do more looking for them and realize, well, there are also all these other sites, but for whatever reason, my search for them work better on my heritage. But get off the beaten path, go, go looking for things that, that are a bit less likely. Um, you, you might find something that's really, really good. In, in many cases, what I'm going to suggest, you will not find a lot of um, hard genealogical information such as birth, marriage, death. But what you will find is context. You'll find information about, about uh, different areas, which to me is very, very important. You want to learn as much as you possibly can about the places that your ancestors uh, lived in. You want to understand the pressures that were on them in terms of did they have to leave for some reason? Did they want to leave? Was there you know, better, better opportunities somewhere else? Whatever, whatever it might be. You want to sort of fill in some of the gaps. Like here in North America, we have local histories for a lot of communities, especially the smaller ones. There, there, there are some of those for, for some locations in Eastern Europe, but they've generally been done years later by, other, by, by just keeners such as me or you. But but the but um, where do, where do you get some, some information? Where do you, where do you find more information about about those areas? That's what I'm going after right now. Internet Archive, which is uh, based in, in San Francisco, run by a guy named Brewster Brewster Kale, who um, is a librarian by training. He made a lot of money in uh, with. Uh, um, a, web, a couple of different websites and he's invested his money put his money back into this his goal is to provide the greatest access to um, information free information in the world he's modeling it after the library of alexandria and one of the companies that he started was alexa uh, which then got sold and now the name is being used for something else entirely but he started alexa which was basically um, a company designed to show web traffic, to measure web traffic, that kind of thing. But Internet Archive, great, great value here. And I've met Brewster Kale a couple of times. We've had a good conversation or two. Um, and I like the guy a lot because he's just, he's giving so much back. But I actually said to him uh, in one conversation, um, as we were having having a drink together at, at, you know, here in Victoria, of all places, um, I said, I really, really like Internet Archive. It's got so much information. It's really tough to search it. Like, I'm not finding a lot of results. And he said, yeah, that's a problem. But there are ways to deal with that. And this is, this is an example. And this is one of the takeaways that you should have from this session. I searched for Rovno, R-O-W-N-O. It's in Poland, or it said Ukraine. It used to be in Poland between the wars. It's spelled... Uh, several different ways could be with a V could be spelled looks different in, in with Cyrillic whether it's Russian or Ukrainian uh, Cyrillic that's different again search for Rovno in an internet archive I got 20 hits and looking down at them I can tell you right away that you know, these aren't really going to be that helpful because right on, on the top row there are three of them that look like sound sound clips sound files but well, that's not going to help me doing a site search and a site searches are incredibly important. And, and for, you should use, use, use this for Internet Archive plus many, many others, other sites. Rovno, just calling up Google, 
and putting in your search field Rovno and then site site colon archive.org which is the location of the internet archive and that way you're, you're, you're searching for Rovno but only in um, that one website and you're sort of using the Google search as opposed to their own internal search. So Rovno site archive.org. And by the way, you can get to the site search by you doing an advanced search on Google. Uh, so you don't have to be actually diving into, you know, typing it in this way. You could go into the advanced search and then do, do it that way. Um, but doing a search for Rovno as a site search, 5,110 results, which I believe is more than 20 which is what I got searching the site itself. Now you're not going to find a whole lot of, you won't find a whole lot of things that are, that are wonderful here, but you will find more than 20 uh, stories or, or, or files, whatever, that will be relevant to your, to your research. You will find something, if your interest is in, is in Rovno, you should be doing this kind of a search. And, you know, the dissolution of Eastern European Jewry, for instance, um, that clearly is something of, of interest to, uh, to people from that area. Um, there's a lot, lot, a lot can be found using a site search. <coughs> and, by, and by doing a more, a more, uh, um, another kind of site search, uh, by adding a bit more information into your search term, uh, Rovno Katolish, uh, German word for Catholic, it's just to see what comes up there. And, and the, 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 the first hit is, uh, um, reference to the, to the Catholic Church and two, two hits for the history of the Mongols. There are many more hits, 384 results in total, mentioning both Rovno and Katolish. So again, we had 20 in total, just searching for Rovno with a proper search engine. So use the site search uh, whenever you possibly can for any site you're, you're working on, just to see what happens. You might have more success. Here's an example of what you can find. There's a reference here from 1922, um, talking about a cholera outbreak in Rovno. This is the kind of thing that doesn't take your family history back at all, but it, if you had family in that area at the time, it might be relevant to you. And, and in the absence of, of newspapers, local histories and so on, this is giving you a slice of life of, about what was happening in that area in the 1920s. So that's why you're looking for this kind of thing to get whatever bits of trivia you can. Again, they're not specifically aimed at your family, but they will help you get a better understanding for the area. Um, looking at it for, uh, for, for uh, books, this one, this under Google books, I search for uh, Sadolish and um, I get some hits. The second one is a uh, Heimat book, Der Deutschen, um, in the, in the, um, in early um, Lutheran um, parishes. Um, so, so that, that'll be of interest to me, but not all Google books will, will, will take you to, Google book searches will take you to an actual book that you can look at, but it makes you aware of a book, which is, which is always helpful. So I click on it. And, and, and here we are. It's 110 years of, of the German colonists in, in, in a certain region in Poland. Um, and I, I, it, make, it makes, makes us aware that the, 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 this book is out there. Even if I can't download it from this site, it makes me aware and I can go looking for it on a site such as Abe or whatever, Abe or eBay, whatever, or booklicker.de, which I use for European stuff a lot site called the Hathi Trust Digital Library. I searched for Riga, Riga being the capital of, uh, of Latvia. And, and uh, again, seeing what I could find, uh, this is quite often more academic uh, material. Um, 350,000 hits for Riga. Will they all be relevant to you? Probably not. Um, but what if you find one or two that are absolutely crucial to your research? That's, that's, what, that's what you're looking for. You want to find something that, that's going to be really helpful to you. Um, it's worth taking a look in here. And Riga is one thing. What if you add in other terms, such as an area within Riga or a religion or whatever, you might, or an ethnic group, you might find something like focusing your search might, might give you something even, even stronger. So always try Hathi Trust as well. Riva, Riva Evangelisch, which is Lutheran church. And, and here we are, 38,000 hits. And I'm assuming that 
by the time you get to about the hundreds, it won't be quite as valuable, but still 38,000 hits talking about uh, even Gaelish, Lutherish, Lutherish and Kirke in Rusland, uh, that kind of thing from 1887. It's, it's worth checking these things out. JSTOR is another site that has a lot of academic material on it. Um, I found some absolutely remarkable stuff on, on JSTOR over the years uh, where people have done as part of their university work a really, really deep dive into some material from one part of the world or another. Uh, sometimes you'll find that kind of thing, or sometimes you'll just find stuff that's been digitized. And there is overlap, uh, be warned, between what Google Books does, what Internet Archive has, and, and Hathi Trust and JSTOR. You might find the same thing on two or three of, of the different sites. But you know, as, as long as you find it somewhere, that's what, what, that's what matters to you. So, so you know, check out JSTOR as well. Uh, in whatever your area is, take a look there for, for information. Um, I searched again for, for Rovno uh, on JSTOR, 1100 hits. Um, and again, how many of these things will, will help? I don't know, but, uh, but it's, it's worth giving it a shot. Europeana uh, is another good site. It's basically, it brings together a lot of material from um, different archives, libraries, etc., cetera, across, across Europe. Uh, you will not necessarily find, it's, it's not one repository, it's a collection. It's a central, a central way for people to get access to, um, or libraries, museums can get access to a site that, where they can post all their stuff. Um, it's, a, it's a really good collection. This way, as a user, I'm searching across um, you know, 50 different libraries and archives with one search on Europeana. I could be looking for something for very, very specific. Um, when I get a search, it'll tell me what, what repository I'm actually in now and where, where, I, where I found this document or this book or whatever it was, but it's worth checking this out as well. The, the collection for Eastern Europe is not as good as it is for Western Europe, but there still is good material there and I would not it's free to use. I, I, I would certainly not, not say don't do it. I would say do it. Searching for woods in, uh, in Poland. Um, it's uh, 69,000 hits. Some of these things will only be maps. Some will be, will, will be images, churches or, or um, the university, whatever, that kind of thing, castles. But, but you're looking for whatever you can find. And again, you might find here something really, really crucial to what you're working on. This, um, thanks to uh, Google Street Views, is the military base in Zhitomer in Ukraine. I've been there many, many times, passed it many times. It's right beside the main highway. Um, and this is where the, the Ukrainian uh, elite uh, paratrooper uh, regiment is, is based. And so, so I'm, I'm assuming right now with the war going on, it's a, it's a fairly secure place. You won't be able to get very close to it. And, and I know that, that uh, the Russians have tried to hit this place a couple of times with, uh, with bombs. But this, this, this was used at different times by different groups. This was used, the, this site has been around for a long time. The buildings have been there for a long time. <coughs> and and uh, for example, um, when, the, when the communists were, were killing a whole lot of people in the, in the um, 1930s, they set up shop here. And they, 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 uh, they, 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 they shot a lot of people at night here. And then the next, they go around to people in the area the next day and say, did you hear anything last night? And uh, the, if anyone answered, yes, I did, I heard shooting, they would be arrested until eventually everyone said, no, I didn't hear anything at all. That's, I got that from people who experienced it back in the day. But and then, then, then the Germans took over um, during, during the, uh, during the uh, Second World War when they were in that area, they took it over for, for three years or whatever. Um, a few years ago, I found um, on eBay, because I, I search eBay and A books all the time to see what I can find if that could be of interest to me. I found on eBay, someone in Germany was selling four photographs, really, really tiny, tiny images, um, allegedly taken by a relative uh, in Ukraine in the, um, in the Second World War. 
but you know the, the relative was a had been a, a German soldier. And looking at the buildings, I was able to identify where it was. And like one of the buildings that shows here, which also appears in, in, in one of the images to come. I bought these, these photographs, there were four photographs. And, I, and my point with this one is always take a look on a books, on eBay, book looker, et cetera. Try to find something that's a bit out of the ordinary. You might not have thought of it, might not have found it somewhere else. This is one of the photographs showing possibly prisoners of war, possibly just soldiers relaxing. Don't really know. There was no identifying information on any of this stuff, sad to say. Here are some people who were being forced to do some work um, with soldiers um, watching them. A bunch of group, a, a group of people um, all being held uh, in an area on this base. And the fourth photograph shows these people, which I'm, I don't know. I can't say for sure. I, was, I suspect they were from the Jewish population, but I can't say that for sure. I'm just guessing because, you know, the look of it, whatever, it's hard to say. But this is where the Jews from the city of Shatomer were rounded up and held until they could be dealt with, for want of a better term. Um, this is the kind of thing, like, like this, is a, this is sort of a fairly downer type of, um, type of thing to show, but it's the kind of thing you can find. If you're looking for, for old photographs of that area, there's not a whole lot out there, but you can find that somebody somewhere took photographs and now they're sticking them on eBay. I've had these, these ones for about 20 years, um, and I keep on looking from time to time. I've got a regular search for Shatomer. Uh, in uh, in eBay, and I spell it in three or four different ways in my searches because you never know. The German the German spelling is different than the Ukrainian, was different than the Russian, different than the, than the English. So use whatever search you can, and and also search for things like like um, like books. Um, I've got I've got local histories of places in Poland that I've picked up. They're in German, um, but they're still entirely readable, usable. Use whatever you can to get more information, more, and, and images are, are information, maps are information. So do whatever you can to get more information for your research. Some of the basic sources that we should all be using, and, and I'm, uh, I won't spend a lot of time on these because they're, they're fairly straightforward. Family search, there's a lot of information on family search. They're doing more and more all the time. All of the digitization work that they've done is tremendous. You can do so much more work now than ever before in your home. I used to go down to Salt Lake City in the 1980s, and it was a real struggle to find a um, um, even an open microfilm machine because there were so many people there. And at one point in the, in the late 1980s, I was dealing with some German uh, parish registers uh, where one's, one film had one side of the register, the other film had the other side. I had to, re I had, to have two machines. And I, I could read read across and see the, see the entire entry that way. And I was really unpopular for doing that. Uh, and finally, I was told to come back in the evening when there were fewer people around because I was just getting in the way. I was taking up two machines. I should only have one machine. Now, of course, it's, it's a breeze. You can do so much of this from home. There still is value in going to Salt Lake City or Allen County or whatever. Like, like each, each, uh, there are people at the libraries who know stuff. And uh, so it's relevant to do that. But in terms of online, Family Search is one of the one of the good places. There's got so much material. Historical record collections. Um, take a look at everything you can for for your area of interest. Armenia church books. Browse images. Just because you have to browse images, don't be discouraged, because that's how we used to do it. You know, like it's. And I made a lot of progress during the, during those years. You can you can dive into specific things. This is, this is Roman Catholic Church books for Lublin and Poland. And you can search this by name, first and last names, but just, just be very careful with spellings and so on. Um, Moldova Church books. And this is for, for Bessarabia uh, Ackerman. Um, it's, it says that at the top. B, this is another reason to be aware of, uh, of different uh, languages. You might not... Uh, ever understand the language if, if someone speaks to you, but if you can read the lettering, um, it, it really, really helps. Uh, because I can do that for, for, for Cyrillic, I've been able to go to archives there and I go through the index cards to see what I can find while someone is translating a document I've already found. 
more and working beside me. I can go through the index cards, I can read the maps, I can read the road signs, I can read the menus, that kind of thing. Um, it, it really, really pays, but in terms of genealogical um, work, it, it's, it's essential to actually know how to, what, what, the, what the different uh, letters mean. <clears throat> Ancestry, um, there's not a huge amount from Eastern Europe, and quite frankly, um, uh, what you will find could be trees, and be very, very careful with trees because I've, I've, especially through through DNA, I've, I've actually blown some trees that, that were online right out of the water because I was able to figure out what they, what they, what the truth was. Um, some trees have been incredibly helpful to me, and some have, uh, some I've had to basically redo and then tell the person that uh, it's not quite as, as you have it. Sorry, um, and some people don't like hearing that, but. Uh, whatever it's it's uh the trees can be helpful but don't believe anything all the way and that applies to any resource you have in in genealogy don't believe don't believe any any source is like above question i found problems in everything i've ever looked at my heritage a lot of good material um on on my heritage for eastern europe um i did a search the, the search is just for solidary which is a town in ukraine 103 results for, for different people from, from Solidary. Uh, that's a town very, very close to where my, where my mother was born. Um, I love it because it's a unique name. There are no, there's only one Solidary that I've ever found and it's there. But my heritage, I found stuff there that I haven't found on, on other sites. And then when I go looking on the other sites, knowing specifically what I'm looking for at that point, I can find it. But my, merit, my heritage had a better search engine to get me to what I was looking for at the time. This is one site I've used a lot for, for Polish, uh, Polish research. I, I have given lots of money to these people because I want to support them in whatever way I can. I can't really do any indexing, but they're, they're pushing 50 million entries now for, uh, for births, marriages, and deaths. And there's a huge amount of information there. It's well worth taking a look at if you have any uh, people at all in Poland. There are many sites like this for other countries. So take a look for the sites like this, wherever, wherever your interests take you. Um, I just want to, this is, a, I'm using this as an example of what's available. And beyond that in Poland, this, this site is, uh, is phenomenal because it has um, parish registers online that you can download. And, and uh, I've done a lot of downloading of this. I've been able to copy a lot of material from this site entire runs of parish registers. I don't have to worry about going to Salt Lake or anything else. I've got them right here on my computer all the time. And I've, once you've downloaded it, once you see how they're organized, in, in many ways, you can organize it in a, in a better way. Like you, you can, rather than having one mass of, uh, of, um, of uh, files, you can split them by year. You can, you can ident identify the ones that have the indexes in them, if there are indexes. It's nice to have them on your own computer because then you can play with them a bit more. In one case, I, the, the quality of the, of the images was not very good. I downloaded the whole works and I uh, improved everything using Photoshop. I cropped everything. So I'm seeing the, the full image, not, not the black border all around it. And, and it's really, really helpful to be able to do that. Um, and again, it makes it, makes it far more usable. So try that. Whatever site you have, where you can find that kind of original material. And then more information on that site, showing the various databases that are there. Um, Jewish records indexing for Poland. Um, a site called Jewish Gen is one of the best there is for, for finding places that may have, uh, may have a different name now, anywhere in Eastern Europe. Um, I also contribute to Jewish Gen simply because they do good work and I'm willing to pay ancestry, so why not the volunteer ones that do good work? That's my, my, my thinking on that. Odessa is for, for German Russian uh, sources um, all, all across the old Russian Empire. This is a site that I believe is still down, Memorial. Um, it's, it's basically the victims of the terror in, 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 the, in the Soviet Union um, in the 1930s. You could search by, by, by name in this and find references to people. And I, I certainly found people from my own my own, uh, my mother's village who were there. Another site referring to the terror, T-E-P-P-O-P-A, -P -P that'd be terror in the USSR. You know, part of the memorial site. 
different uh, different countries have different um, archives. I like this one because um, it's from uh, Riga and Latvia. And when I was in Riga a few years ago, I went to the archives and I tried to get in and they simply told me I wasn't allowed to come in. And I said, I want to, I want to do some research here. I know that my relatives came through here. Uh, I want to know more about the, the about migration, et cetera. And they said, no, you can't do that. Said, but they're online. Why can't, I, why, why can't I walk in and look at this stuff? Why can't I sit there for a few minutes? Anyway, so it's, but every country has, at one point I had, I had images from all of the different archives across Eastern Europe in this talk, but, but you know, it's the, the, every country has them, they're easy to find. <clears throat> archives of Belarus, and Belarus uh, is one that is not, they're not really conducive to, uh, to um, people from the West doing research. It's uh, become such a closed, uh, even before the war, it, became, it, was, it was a very, very closed country. So bringing it all together, I'm going to give an example here of some of the work that I've done uh, with one specific uh, family. And this, this is a family. My mother's maiden name was Weiss or Weiss, however it was said back then. I found the family in 2021. Um, I've been doing research on my family tree since 1978. I found where my mother's ancestry was in 2021. So people who say I've been doing genealogy for six months and I'm going to quit because I haven't found anything yet, I'm frustrated. Well, it took me more than four decades to, to track down what I wanted. So it's, it's worth caring, keeping, keeping at it. Um, the, the church records in Sedolish um, found, revealed the family for me, but it took a bit of effort to get there. Um, years ago, about 25 years ago, one time in Salt Lake City, I went through all of the Lutheran um, parish registers for Poland, just looking for the, for, for the Weiss family. And when I say all, I'm, that's actually not quite true because I didn't bother with the ones that only had a few years in them. I went for the ones that had, had more, more years. And as a result of that, I didn't look in Sedolish. Um, I should have. So I, I, I could have found this 20 years earlier if I'd actually done it properly, but no, I, I was cutting corners. I, I missed this one. So how did I get to it? That'd be the question next. How did I find it in 2021? It was DNA. For, first of all, old uh, German immigration records. Um, this, is, this is a record from my great-grandmother arriving in German-held territory from Ukraine. Uh, she, this was in November 1943 that she uh, and other family members left Ukraine heading towards uh, the Wuj area in, 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 uh, in uh, Poland, known as Lismanstadt back in the day, giving information, uh, in this case, about her husband's father, um, a guy named Johann Weiss. And another document shows that uh, Johann's um, Johann was married to someone named Adam. Last name was Adam. So this is part of the same file. For her, for her um, daughter-in-law, more information, um, also saying Adam, but this time saying Henrietta, which is, I, I, I took seriously for a long time. Now I believe that maybe her, da her daughter-in-law did not know exactly what, what, what the information would have been because that person would have been long dead before the daughter-in-law came onto the scene. So where would she have got that information? And did she perhaps confuse it? Because on the Scheffler side, the, the, uh, the grandmother's name was Henrietta. So I think she might've got information wrong there. That's based on what I found later, my, 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 my belief in the error. <clears throat> I had a bunch of, Adam matches on ancestry DNA. So I thought, well, I will take a look and see. They've all got a bit of information here and bearing in mind that a lot of trees are a suspect. So don't take anything at face value. Don't believe anything, but, but dive into it and see what clues you can get. So I split up all of these matches and uh, to see what I could find. I, I only chose the ones that had information about um, locations, early locations. And you can see that certain names are appearing over and over. There's Sidolish, there's, there's uh, uh, Platkovnitsa as well. They were showing up a lot. And I liked that in a way because it wasn't, they were, they were, they were, they were different references to it. 
um, they weren't all all saying exactly the same words. They were they 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 had different references, which said to me that they people were individually on their own reaching that conclusion. They weren't all just copying and pasting from some other 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 um, site, other other family tree online. They were they were they were um, doing their own research. So that led me to think, okay, that looks so solid. I better take a look at that. So Johann Weiss was married to an atom. DNA match locations are you know, possibly, you know, physical locations, uh, places like uh, uh, Platkovnica and so on. And, and, and where are they? You haul out a map of Poland. I, I looked at pilot.pl and by golly, uh, the three of them, three of the four are all in the same basic location. So that is telling me got to look there got to look there because because the evidence is just so strong uh go on to uh, family search uh for for the uh for for the parish register for there there are only a few years there which is why i ignored it before 1845 to 1852 and there are gaps in that but can i find any reference to the family in there and the reference i found was the marriage um the marriage of johann weiss and elsbieta adam which uh, um, just the thought of getting this after so many years of looking, after ba basically 43 years in on genealogy, I finally found this marriage record uh, and, and it was fantastic to see this. So I had it, um, uh, I had it translated uh, by one of the handy volunteers at the, uh, at the, at the, uh, Family Search uh, Library in Salt Lake City. That's where I was at the time. And it gives the locations, gives a village name. So Sedolish and then the, the, the village name, however that is pronounced. Whenever I've been in Poland, I've tried pronouncing things that people laugh at me a lot. Uh, so I'm not sure how to, how to pronounce it, but, but there we are. Um, it could be Sokovec or whatever, something along that line. Uh, but that's where, that's where the village was. And uh, remember that name. That's where the village was for the family. So what else can I do online now? Um, go to this, this site here, which is basically search the archives uh, in, in Poland. This site was down for a while. I believe it's all fully back up now, but it was down for about a month uh, quite recently. And you can search and uh, you can use different languages on, on there. The first one is Ruski for Russian or English or Deutsch for German. Uh, so beyond Polish, you've got, you've got the, the different choices there. Shows English. Search in archives, online archival collections. Do a search within that. Um, and uh, I wanted to find um, Sedolish and the Seedless or whatever it is, Seedlitz, um, for, you know, to see what I could, what, what I could track down for, for parish registers and the like. And there we have the, um, the, the records for, for, for seedlets, seedlets. Um, all helpful, all taking me to more information. All of this can be, can now be done from your home. It's all online. Beyond that, use Gen Geneteca again to see what you can find. Um, uh, they, they've added so much more in the past, uh, past couple of years. Um, I've made, been making screen caps of this, uh, of this page for quite some time. It's amazing to see the growth that comes. As I say, they're pushing 50,000 now, or 50 million for entries for births, marriages, and deaths. So it's well worth it. Um, so what do I do beyond that? I've got a lot, the other sources that, that I've mentioned already. Uh, there's, there's the maps um, uh, on pilot.pl. Uh, one of the advantages of maps these days is that you can actually create your own map. You can actually copy things off, off a website and create a map that shows your own villages, your own ancestral areas, whatever it might be. And you don't have to worry about where boundaries were in maps in terms of some maps that used to cover a certain, you know, up to a certain point, another map you need for the, for the other part of it, the other part of the village even. I've seen, in one case, I saw a very, very small town in England I needed four maps to show it. You don't have to do that anymore because you can merge all those maps together. Here's, here's a map that I um, put together uh, showing Sedolish, uh, Pletkovnica, and uh, this Sojkovec or whatever it's called, Osienta, um, 
in the in the in that area. They all they all show up with the family uh, family records uh, for that area. Um, I, I stitched this together using Photoshop. It was actually two different maps that were available. Um, th these are old uh, Austrian maps. So I, I stitched it together just to see what I could do. That's where the where the line between the maps is. So if you look carefully, you can see where it was stitched. But I just merged the two together uh, to uh, to help to help show what the areas were like. Just a reminder that things are better because now you can create your own maps. So looking at some of the different sites for Patkovnitsa, that kind of thing, it's it's a name that is fairly unique. So so take a look there uh, for for that name. You look for a name. When you're looking, when you're doing this kind of thing, you look for a name that's unusual. So, so it's a, simplify your search somewhat, and it shows the the various uh, places around there, Satolish and so on. And um, Patkovnitsa is up towards the top. That was a fairly well known community in terms of German settlers going into that part of Poland. A lot has been written about that area over the years. So I'll go looking for it. In, in an archive, doing a search for it. Search did not match any items in the archives. Okay, so there's nothing in an internet uh, archive. But if you go to internet archive using the site search, I find three different um, publications. And, and it's, uh, it's actually kind of cool because the first uh, one is in Polish, the second one is in French, and the third one is in German. But all three refer to Płatkownica. Um, in, in, in the documents. So it's, it's worth taking a look at that. Hathi Trust, there, there are 19 results um, for, for that area. Again, you're looking for whatever kind of resource you could that would give you information about the, about the place. Local history, whatever you, whatever you can find out, church records, whatever, just to sort of build your search. Uh, JSTOR, um, um, reference uh, Minderheit is a minority. So it's a reference to the German minority in, in, um, in uh, Poland in, in this one book. And you, you dive a bit further in and there's the name of the book, uh, German minority in Poland and their education in 1918, 1939. And you can't download individual chapters, but this makes you aware that the book is available, the book is out there, and you can scroll down and see the names of all the chapters. You can decide whether you want to, to grab that book or not. Um, be warned, I've looked for it. It's 170 euros, so I don't think I need it. But you, you can see how to find things like this. You can then, I can go looking for it on A books or eBay, whatever, to see what you can track down. A straight search on Google uh, for Patkovnica and German, looking for German, uh, German um, um, people there. And that search alone, what does that do? That search is going to, going to find me uh, English language documents because I'm saying German. If I said Deutsch, I, I, I'd, be, I'd be more likely to get German language documents. So I'm limiting myself right here to, uh, to English language documents. Bear that in mind with your searching. If you're dealing with a foreign country, learn to search for it. Um, in, learn, 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 learn to do searches using, using words from that language. It'll increase your, your hits dramatically. Um, Google Books, uh, searching for, for Patkovnica. And I see a name that I saw a while earlier, uh, Ruth Menka. Um, uh, again, this book came up in an, in an earlier search when I was look, look, searching for Sadolish. So here it is again. And um, it, it's, it's always good to take a look to see what, what the reference is. Maybe you can find, find more about the book, but, uh, more about, uh, more about um, anything to do with, with, with it. But this is a, a straight a search for a Google book. And this one, uh, the, the search led me to... Um, references in a publication. This is, a, this is a, another, another book that she did, uh, or another work that she did, uh, Deutsche Kolonisten in, in Christ Wengroff. Um, we look, go, go down, it says part of Ostdeutsch Familienkund, uh, which is um, a publication 
um, done done in Europe for Eastern Europeans uh, or Eastern people who live in, in, in the Eastern areas, basically, but it's all in German. As luck would have it, I have the full run of those back to the 1980s when I became a member of that organization. So I can easily track down that publication. I wouldn't have known to look for it in, in my bookcases, except this. there's a reference here on family search. And that reference to family search was fairly straightforward. I just clicked on a link and boom, it takes me through to family search. So it's it's always worth um, looking at different different ways. Once you find that a name is available or, or a name, someone has done something on, on, on what you're interested in, take a look um, at, at family search, take a look at Abe, whatever you can you can track down. And uh, again, there, there's another reference to it showing her name. And uh, another, another reference, uh, Burris, et cetera, for the first uh, German uh, colonists in, in, in this region in uh, Eastern Poland. So all of this is helpful in terms of getting beyond the basics. Like you can, I'm, my, my goal with this was to try to show some general, general um, uh, sources that could apply wherever you're doing your research in Eastern Europe to, to go beyond the basics and look for more slightly more obscure things and you might find uh, sources of information you wouldn't have found otherwise um, and and I hope that the map information here will help you because pilot PL has been fantastic for me and uh, the other sources with luck uh, things will work and with that the map or the, or the, the this this photo I've got this is courtesy Google Street Views, and this is the road that leads into my ancestral area. Um, the right where you go, going off the main highway, going down that road. I'm always a bit scared when I'm in a place like Poland to go down a road like that, because who knows what's on the other end. But whatever, you do it anyway, because you're trying to find family. So with that, any questions, any thoughts, anything else? I'd appreciate it. That was amazing. There are several questions, but yeah. there are so many people who have been very appreciative and there were lots of um, just tips and things being shared in the chat, which is always wonderful for these programs. So thank you. Okay. Okay. So the first question, um, the archives that you spoke about towards the beginning, were they in the bomb building already? Were they already online? Um, the archives in, in that bomb building, a lot of the stuff there was not sort of crucial. That wasn't the main archive that we would be using for family history research. It was more party stuff, that kind of thing. It wasn't the main, the, the main um, archives, but I don't believe they had been uh, copied. Okay. Big because because it's, it, that archive was there, there. There there are so many priorities in the in the former Russian Empire in terms of uh, microfilming. Um, the uh they they can't get, get to everything I, I was told at one time that everything that they identified would take them 200 years to microfilm so this this one was way way down the list of priorities gotcha okay. thank you so someone's asking how do you handle country borders that have changed over time for example their ancestors come from i believe you say klana which is sometimes in croatia and sometimes in italy okay how do you handle it in terms of recording it? I guess I guess is the question. Um, I I would always record the the uh, the name that was in use, the boundaries that were in use at the time of the event. But then you have to put into your notes that there is a change. And so, uh, like a, like a city a city like Lviv, which has you you could you could be you could be born, married, and died in Lviv. You could be in that could all happen in three different countries. But, but you never leave that city. So I would record the name that was shown um, the, the show, shown at the time, the, the, the accurate name at the time of the event, and, and then uh, use notes to indicate what it is. Perfect, thank you. Um, so someone's actually asking how somebody would have gotten from a place in Poland to Bremen, Germany, um, to then come to the U.S. and they're they're asking around 1914. So okay. how how would this even happen that people would get to? The I, what was the what was the the starting point for it? It's Poland. It's a town okay. that I won't be able okay. to pronounce. Okay, but, okay. But, but but probably probably by by train. 
uh, for the most part, that's what happened. Um, I'm lucky with uh, my parents coming over or my grandparents coming over in 1928 on Holland America because the Holland America records actually show how they got to the port. Um, so in my case, um, or my grandparents' case, I know that they went uh, to to Kiev and then they went up to uh, to Riga and Latvia, then down to Amsterdam, and it had the, had the prices all along, all you know for the train trip and so on and so on. Uh, the uh, the archives in um, in Rotterdam. Uh, I've been there a couple of times. Very very helpful in terms of understanding uh, how how. Um, how there are so many files there on the on the background of the different organizations, such as Holland America. Holland America was one of one of several um, organizations, so, several um, shipping companies. They all worked together to uh, to get people over to North America. So a lot of information was shared back and forth between them. Uh, going through the Holland America archives was eye opening in terms of. Um, just how how things were done. Generally, it was by rail. Generally, you can you can you can find find the, find the routing. Uh, that's why I look for things like um, like historical analysis of railways, just to see what the route would have been. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so someone was curious. It wasn't on the handout. I I did look, um, but do you happen to know off the top of your head what the code would be for Serbia for um, getting on the pilot.pl? I thought it was there. I'm sorry if it wasn't. Um, I didn't I, see I, it. I, I don't. I don't know offhand, but it's a, uh, it's a, it's a fairly straightforward search if you want to look for it. Just, just, just do a search for uh, two-letter code Serbia, and that should bring it up for you. It looks like right now it is SP. Okay. I googled it just in case. You are good. All right, so let's see here. Um, do you use Google Chrome to translate web pages from the foreign language to English? Um, sometimes I also use just straight Google Translate in using using Firefox or or whatever. It, it, it depends. I find that lately Google Translate has been incredibly accurate, so better than it has been for years. That's awesome. Um, now, like like letters, I've had to write a couple of letters to uh, to. Um, uh, different different organizations in Germany lately, and I've 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 Google translated the stuff to check it over looked okay to me. I send them off to to a friend of mine who is a teacher in Germany, and and I say how is it, and uh, he's he's basically gotten back to me a couple of times and said, wow, you're really good at this, and I say, well, actually no, actually it's Mr. Google, but anyway. Um, uh, just, uh, just another reference there. I just saw a flash on the screen for another, another, another translation tool. There are a lot of different sources for a lot of different things. I saw something as well flash on the screen about WorldCat, which I should have mentioned as well. Um, there are a lot of different options out there right now. And I was going to get into a full list of all the different uh, mapping tools you can use, but they're easy to find, you know, in creating your own maps. I was going to say, what's wonderful about our crowd is that everybody is great about collaborating and helping one another. So yeah. um, it's really fun to see what they come up with in the chat. Yeah, I always get, I always get a kick out of the, the comments because quite often someone will, will say, come up with something that I haven't thought of or I should have put in or whatever, that kind of thing. Sometimes I see things I've never even heard of before and it really helps. And every now and then someone will actually say, uh, you mentioned this, uh, such and such a family, and I'm related to that family. And then, ooh, okay. Uh, especially when I'm dealing with Canadian research, I, I quite often will have someone say, we're connected this way. Cool. Anyway, go, sorry, go ahead. You know, you're fine. Um, we're getting close to time. So I think okay. we're only going to do one or two more uh, questions here. Okay. So okay. Um, someone's wondering, are there any records for Orthodox churches in Eastern Europe? Oh, yes. But but it, it, again, it gets down to what area you're in, what area you're looking at, and um, whether whether they've been microfilmed, that kind of thing. Check check with Family Search. Um, you know, take a look on on on, on Family Search to see if if there's anything for that specific area. Um, different churches have different different concerns with uh, with uh, access, providing access, and some records for some church, some churches are simply gone. Uh, some religions are simply gone. Um, I've, we've been looking for some 
my, 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 my mother's family, family was Baptist. We've been looking for, for those records for, for decades. Can't find them. Oh, goodness. So, but, but Orthodox, you should, you, they should be available. They should be, they're, they're there, but whether they're available is the question. Gotcha. Um, and then let's see here. One last question before we have to go. Um, this is very specific. Do you know if there were any other census records beyond 1857 for Germans from Russia in the villages of Dobrinka, Galka? That, that is way too specific. I don't know. Okay. That's perfectly yeah, fine. Yeah. Okay. I was just kind of curious. Okay. Just, okay. We love those little specific questions. Yeah. If anybody has a question like that, feel free to shoot us an email. We're always happy to help um, and see what we can do and what we can point you to. Um, but I do want to point out that Dave has been very generous and he has his website on his handout and his email address. So I am sure that if you have something that's super specific, he might be able to help, but so can we. And my colleague has put the email in the chat, genealogy at acpl.info. Use that to ask questions of us here at ACPL. Or feel free to go ahead and um, request a copy of the chat because there's been a lot of great sources in the chat as well. Um, but we would love to be able to help you and continue this conversation. But unfortunately, we're out of time for this evening. So thank you so much, Dave, for a wonderful presentation. Everybody is raving in the chat. Okay, um, I'll make sure to get you a copy. <laughs> okay. And, and hi, Kathy. One of my cousins is online. Oh, um, wonderful. Yeah. So any, anyway, thank you very much. And as, as, as has been said, I'm, I'm an email away. Wonderful. So, thank you so okay. much for being so generous. And everyone have a wonderful evening, and we hope to okay. see you on Tuesday. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay.